Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another Warrior Wednesday, where we discuss relevant topics designed to make you a better warrior. Today's topic is going to be the Warrior's Code, and specifically, respect. Respect is something that is pretty high up there. Respect and honor, which can go hand in hand or be slightly separate subjects. They're pretty high up there on the warrior's code, on the list of things that really, in my opinion, makes a true warrior. Now, we're going to get into this. We're going to talk about it in depth. I'm going to give you my opinions on it. I'm going to also offer opinions of way more <laughs> seasoned and experienced warriors than myself. I'll quote, uh, Miyamoto Masashi, quite a lot. Sun Tzu from the Art of War, Sun Bin, all of these guys. Okay, even current and relevant warriors like Bruce Lee, Scott Bolin, um, my friend and mentor, who taught me a lot about the Warriors Code. He's still living and breathing. We're going to talk about this and we're really going to get into it today because I've had some. Pretty incredible experiences. I'm currently out in Southeast Asia. I've been here for some time. And I've had some pretty incredible experiences out here that we're going to touch on that really got me thinking about this. Now, I got to tell you guys, I got to be honest up front. <clears throat> you can tell I'm kind of hoarse. There's a lot of pollution out here. And um, I've been out here for <laughs> a little while now. And so it's starting to get to me. But I'm nonetheless going to get through and do this Warrior Wednesday, because I know that the people that do regularly watch, it's not a whole lot of you guys, but I know the ones that do really do enjoy uh, the talks that we have. So let's get into it, guys. Um, respect. It's something that is largely known amongst professional and serious and seasoned warriors but largely lost upon the inexperienced and wannabe type warriors, all right? And you'll always know a younger or inexperienced or frankly, a wannabe type um, from the amount of respect that they will show other people because a truly experienced and seasoned warrior has really not much to prove. Generally speaking, almost always, in fact, somebody who's been through a lot of fights, somebody who's been through a lot of battles, they're more detached and they're just, they don't need to prove anything to anybody. And so they're more apt to be polite and courteous and respectful towards everybody. And dare I even say that they're going to be polite and courteous towards their enemies. They will, in fact. They they generally will. This is a warrior that you don't want to mess with. <laughs> Somebody who is polite to you, even though you are disrespecting them, um, you're in a lot of trouble and you don't know it <laughs> at that point. And this is the way the samurai would operate. You know, they had an old saying back in the day, if I'm correct, that um, the bigger the smile got on the samurai's face, the closer he was to decapitating you. It's just a it's a cultural thing that you kind of have to go through and experience and uh, talk to a lot of killers and be around it a lot and get that level of experience for yourself, that level of confidence for yourself. But once you once you've been around it and experienced it enough, you will start to put the pieces together and say, fuck, like these guys are very polite and courteous and respectful. But if you really cross them too much, you're, you're pretty close to death. I mean, you really are. I can always tell a professional fighter um, or a warrior, you know, somebody who's been through um, a lot of cage fights or ring fights or even street fights or somebody who's been in the special forces or, you know, a very seasoned Marine or, or army soldier, something like that. They're a lot calmer. They're a lot more collected. They're a lot more detached and they're just a lot more courteous and polite. And everything has got to do with honor. And I can always tell somebody who's not experienced because they're a lot more fiery, a lot more disrespectful, a lot more arrogant and prideful 
And I'm not saying that these professional warriors are not arrogant because, <laughs> I mean, they they certainly can be. I mean, if you've ever talked to a Green Beret, <laughs> you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, those guys in particular, for some reason, are just like the definition of arrogance. But I don't know why. But I can also always uh, I can always tell a professional when they comment in one of my videos, and I can always tell somebody who is just not doesn't know what they're talking about, you know, because the people that really know what they're talking about, the people that are very experienced and the people that frankly, I would actually want to have a discussion and listen to are always very respectful when they disagree with something that I've said. Um, they'll put it like, well, I appreciate you saying that, but I feel like this, or, you know, you're right about this, but I disagree with this, something like that. And usually the people who like, probably have had a few too many beers before they get on the internet or the people who are just like delusional or they want to pretend that there's something they're not, they'll come out and just slander, right? The stupid video, stupid, you're stupid, this and that, this and that, you're wrong. Uh, I would just do this. Like, okay. Like I, I know not to listen to you at that point, but the men who, who come on and in the comments are very respectful about things, but they disagree. That's somebody I'll always sit down and listen to and take to heart what they say. There's another thing that the pros, and I'll just say the pros, and I'll put that in every breed of warrior, um, whether that's, you know, a, a professional or amateur fighter, whether that's uh, somebody who's served time, a lot of time in prison, um, and actually been involved with things that, <clears throat> excuse me, in there, or somebody who's uh, been through some combat in the military, like, we'll, we'll just say the professionals. Something else that I've noticed about all of these types is we've been checked. They've been checked, right? They've been checked a lot. Um, you know, when you're when you're growing up and coming up in this lifestyle, whether you're a professional martial, martial artist or whatever, like I said, a professional, you will be checked a lot. Whether that's getting beat the fuck up and sparring, um, beat up in the streets, checked in the prison house, checked a lot in the military, you know, like your ego will be knocked and put down into size quite a bit. And eventually your ego will, not that it shrinks, but it goes into the right place where you realize like, yes, I, I might be pretty tough, but there's always somebody out there tougher than me. And the one thing I love about fighting about mixed martial arts is it's such a contact oriented sport that you will always be checked there's not a week when i walk in and wrestle or do jujitsu or muay thai and spar that i don't get checked and i need that i think every warrior desperately needs that otherwise our egos would all be this fucking big and somebody who doesn't do a lot of sparring doesn't get checked and you can tell like the krav maga guys they walk around like this with their egos 10 sizes the too big they never spar. They never get checked. They never realize that they're 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 delusional. I'm not saying all Krav Maga guys are delusional, but many, many, many of them are, because they don't spar and they don't know that. Like, well, like you can you can throw groin kick groin kicks, but you know, <laughs> Mister MMA fighter who's also wrestling and doing jujitsu and boxing and you know all of that and sparring all the time can also do groin kicks and poke you in the eye. So you better you better check yourself, man. But being checked is a very important part of being a warrior. You know, when you're actually doing something, you're you're doing it enough that you're going to be checked a lot and your ego is going to be put back into its place. You know, being, being respectful and polite and humble is really the hallmark of a professional warrior and the type of person you really shouldn't fuck with. And I've said this a few times already, but... Um, the more polite and professional that somebody is, the really the less they are to be fucked with because they will they will hurt you very bad and it will be over before you know it. And you won't see any signs that it's going to happen either. Um, they're typically very cool about things. They will literally hurt you and you'll have no idea it's about to happen. And when it's done, you'll probably not really realize that it happened for a second. That's been my experience. The Warrior Poet Society dude, uh, I forget his name, John something or other, I think. Um, 
he made a great video a while ago about the most dangerous man in the room being like the one that you might not notice or the one that you might not think um, is the most dangerous guy in the room. You know, generally these guys, guys who, who are this capable, we don't like to talk about it a lot. Like, obviously, like, you know, the YouTubers, we come on here, we, we have these channels, we talk about it, but why would we talk about it in public? Like with random people, we don't need anyone to know that we know how to do this stuff, right? Because, I mean, another thing about this is you learn, <laughs> I've learned the hard way over the years that if you talk enough, like if you talk enough about the fact that you know martial arts or whatever, then nobody's going to want to fight you. They're just going to stick you in the back or shoot you or get a bunch of buddies and come after you. They're not going to fight fair, right? So why, <laughs> why nullify the fact that you're a good fighter? Right. You don't want anyone to know about it. Um, and same shit goes for people who have been in special operations and stuff. Uh, maybe not. <laughs> maybe not some of the guys, because some of the guys are pretty. They like can't shut up about it. But a lot of the really serious guys, they they don't talk much about it, you know, and you might not know. And that's the way that's the way they want it. Um, I've had some experience with um, <laughs> how do I put this? I've had some experience with some uh, groups. Um, I'll just leave it at that. I've had some experience with some groups. <laughs> and these type of individuals in these groups are very, very serious people. And they'll never, you'll, they, they won't even admit that they're part of a group. You know what I'm saying? Like they don't, you'll never know. They don't want you to know. You won't, you won't know and they don't talk about it. You don't know, and they won't talk about it. That's how you know they're fucking serious. It's usually the guys with more to prove to themselves and to the rest of the world that dress and act the most loudly. You know, guys who walk around, and I'm just going to say it, and I don't mean any disrespect by this whatsoever, but guys who walk around in the grunt-style T-shirts, you know, especially the guys overseas, right? Um, I've noticed that. I see an American out here with his grunt style t-shirt on and, you know, some kind of ball cap. And I immediately, it just goes into, I always classify people in my head as I walk, as I walk. <laughs> and he immediately goes into the non-threat classification because anybody who would be an actual threat or it would never dress like that. Right. Um, guys who wear like the tight t-shirts with the, the, MMA logo or the what, like whatever, you know, like they want to demonstrate, they want to put out there that like, I'm tough. Like, I don't really worry about those guys too, too much. Keep an eye on them because they're dangerous, but don't, they're not that dangerous. Um, Guys with like a lot of hard tattoos, you know, like that can go two ways. I mean, cause <laughs> um, I always say don't fucking mess with a guy with neck tattoos or face tattoos. But honestly, there's a lot of guys out there with that too that they just want to look hard and they're they're not. And they're not, you know. But it's been my experience that the guys who are, you know, pretty hard and have tattoos, they'll they'll try to play it down a little bit and they won't. <laughs> they might not make that much eye contact, you know? They 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 kind of walk around with their head down a little bit. Um, so to speak, if that makes any sense to you, and if that makes sense to you, then you know what I'm talking about. Um, my friend Taylor, he just had a fight out here for a professional Muay Thai fight on the stage behind me. Um, it was a pretty big deal, heavyweight fight, and he was fighting a national champion from China. And it was a brutal fight. <laughs> I was cornering him. It was a great honor, but it was, let me tell you this, it was a brutal fight. Um, and Taylor got his tibia broken. For any of you who know, you'll know that's a pretty big injury, pretty big deal, but he fought all five rounds through a broken tibia. A lot of respect for him. Very tough guy. But you know what the funny part is, is the Chinese uh, fighter also had a huge amount of respect for him at the end. And it was a brutal fight. I mean, I'm talking flying knees. <laughs> I'm talking just little mercy during the fight. I mean, it was, it was, it was a crazy, it was a crazy matchup. These guys had no mercy towards each other, but at the end of the fight, 
Um, the Chinese obviously won by points and, um, at the end of the fight, they raised his hand and before he did anything else, he knelt down in front of my friend Taylor and, um, they, they both, you know, knelt in front of each other and the guy bowed to him very deeply and, um, they hugged it out at the end and it was fucking beautiful to watch, man. It was fucking beautiful to watch the amount of respect this Chinese dude had for Taylor getting in there and finishing the fight, everything like that. They just like, you could tell, like they were both trying to kill each other in the ring pretty much literally. And afterwards they just both looked at each other and they were like, wow, you're fucking crazy. No, you're fucking crazy too. Like I respect you. And then at the end we were um, sitting there in the, the fighter's tent behind you here. And um, the Chinese came over, Chinese dude came over and he hugs Taylor and he didn't really speak any English, but it was like more like apparent. And they friend he friended Taylor on Instagram. They friended each other, and they still like like each other's stories and like like each other's uh, training videos and stuff. It's it's cool. It's very cool. And I've noticed that about the Chinese uh, fighters out here in Southeast Asia. It's they have a lot of respect, man. They they are very respectful people. Very humble. And that's not <laughs> that's not all Chinese. I mean, the, the the Chinese don't have a good reputation around the world, but the Chinese fighters, man, they are they're very respectful because they study the art of war and they know the warrior's code. And you know, when I say the warrior's code, I'm not necessarily talking about a, a strictly written down code, right? It's a it's a it's a non spoken thing. It's an understood thing, and you you have to be in the world to really understand it and get it. It's not talked about too, too much. You know, I'm not talking about the Bushido. That was like, I think that was like written by a Westerner. Um, um, I'm talking about the unspoken, you know, warrior's code. And I've noticed also that it doesn't always translate into victory, being polite, honorable, respectful in the short term. But in the long run, it does and it will. When we are in battle, we are trying to kill each other. But when all is said and done, if you've gone through that and you're willing to put yourself in a position to do that, you will always look at the other man who also puts himself in that position with a great amount of respect. Musashi says that you may sacrifice your life in battle, but you must preserve your honor. This is 100% true and it's timeless. It's a timeless saying. It's Timeless advice. There's a reason that warrior cultures of the past have always been fucking psycho about preserving your honor. I mean, you look at the Spartans and they would say, come back with your shield or not at all, or come back with your shield or on your shield or something like that. The Japanese, obviously, even into World War II, were psychotic about it. No surrender. Um... All of the very serious warrior cultures have always been very, very serious about honor. Even in prison culture, they very serious about, to some degree, about honor. Honor yourself, honor your comrades, and honor your enemy as well. That is, I mean, that is the serious warrior's outlook. If you have honor your enemies will respect you and if your enemies have honor you will respect your enemies too it doesn't mean you're not trying to kill them or that you even like them but you will respect them even if your enemy has no honor and you preserve yours the odds will eventually be in your favor and i'll leave you with that until next time Please remember that you are your first and last line of defense.
gutterfightingsecrets.com is our website. Grab some merch. Go ahead, do it. Grab some merch. I'd love to sell it to you. And we've got great training videos available on there as well. I'll see you on the next one, guys. Don't forget, like, subscribe, share if you so desire. And I'll see you on Saturday for another hand-to-hand -hand combat video. Cheers, mother flowers. <laughs>